Yeah. Okay, so I did read Trump questions from Facebook, dead in the water, to Britain first, dead in the water. Tell you afternoon drivers, king of radio, dead in the water. I tell you about the Birds Bay and pollution, not a call. I tell you that Glenn Beck supports Bernie Sanders instead of Donald Trump. Would, would rather support Sanders than Trump. And I, I think it's because preparation crosses the blood-brain barrier faster than uh, than vitamin C or heroin. Not a call. Nothing's like a dead day. I don't get this. What is everyone, stupefied? Where are they? There's no sporting events. There's nothing out there today. But nevertheless, they're not there. I guess I have to use the key words that motivate radio. Let's see. Uh, founding fathers. Say founding fathers eight times. Reagan. The world began with Ronald Reagan. I once knew someone who delivered mail for Ronald Reagan. I knew someone who delivered sponge cake to Ronald Reagan. I personally am related to the person who knew Nancy Reagan, shoemaker. I'm directly related to the people in National Review because they know Ronald Reagan's aunt. Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan, National Review. National Review. Pure constitutionalist. I'm a conservative. Anyone who doesn't follow Ronald Reagan is not a conservative. I mean, I could do that for three hours if you'd like. Maybe you'd like to talk about that. It's very easy to do. So I'm telling you that without the environmental wackos, you know what you'd have? L let alone San Francisco Bay, which is rather pure right now. You can eat the fish. The birds are healthy. It's because of the environmental wackos of 40 years ago. I'm trying to explain something to you. See, you can be a knee-jerk conservative just as you can be a knee-jerk liberal. And that's something I've been trying to tell you now for weeks. Knee-jerk conservatives say the same thing every day. You want me to just liberal bash every day? I've done it for 20 years. It's boring. I invented liberal bashing. So why should I go on with it? I wrote liberalism as a mental, liberalism as a mental disorder. Why should I go on with it? I don't know. I'm in a weird mood. Maybe I'll read from my novel, Abuse of Power, some of my favorite San Francisco scenes. The most important novel to come out of San Francisco in the last 20 years. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Right, here's a hot story. Mark Zuckerberg uh, of Facebook is back from paternity leave. That means about 50,000 workers will be fired so they can be replaced from H-1B visa workers from India at half the price. I mean, while he was away, they probably had a job. Now forget about it. Two months of paternity leave. His wife, Dr. Priscilla Chan, gave birth to the couple's first child, a daughter named Max, at the end of November. I got to pause here. Uh, let, me, let me put it in a nice way. I see all these celebrities having children. And they think that when they have a child, it's the first child ever born on Earth. They think it's... Something divine, which is something normal, by the way, for parents. And they think that their child's going to be different than every other child ever born. Of the billions of children ever born, only their celebrity child will be different. Smarter, better, brighter. Well, it can't happen statistically. And every time I see another celebrity in Hollywood who takes time out from snorting coke or using ecstasy or speed to clean up for a few months to have a child, and they go back to her wayward ways... I pity the poor child that she has, and I say to myself, yeah, get back to me when the child's 13. Then get back to me when the child's 16. What are they telling us to have this wonderful child for? What are they using as a new handbag that they just bought? Why don't they just raise the child instead of telling me about it? And who names a, ch a daughter Max and expects it to grow up like normal? You name your daughter Max, is like throwing a negative at her. Why don't you give her a girl's name? What, what do you mean Max? What's your name for his father? Who names a child a man's name? Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Wasn't Obama's mother's name Stanley? Wasn't her mother's name Stanley? Something weird like that. How'd that work out for America? Well, the thing is, I mean, the, you know, there's such a thing as uh, e evolution and oh, breaking down norms and everything's equal. That's wonderful. But let's look at the actual results. You know, let's look at the results of all these ideas. These ideas haven't really worked out that well, this idea of anarchy, has it? So I read this on Friday, No Man is an Island by John Donne, and I'll read it again, because it relates to what I just said to you. 
No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, the part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less. As well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. And that shows the connection, the interconnection between all of humanity. Everyone seems to know that, except extremists of the practitioner of the religion of pieces. They don't see themselves as part of humanity. They see humanity as garbage, filth, vermin to be killed, murdered, maimed in the most horrible ways. How can a world tolerate such an offshoot of humanity as this and disguise it as something to be accepted? How can Britain import people who see themselves as not only superior to the British while they're living on welfare, but something that will replace the British itself? How can they not throw them out of the country? How can we have a president who seems to side with the worst elements of humanity and attack the best elements of humanity. Going after... Oh, well, see, I was on a tear just now. i got to slow down. It's Monday. It's blue Monday at that because it snowed over the weekend. Then it's January. It's not supposed to snow. Why, that snow broke records by one inch, not by 100 feet, not even by a foot. By several inches, it broke the record in New York by, I think, a less than an inch or two from 1947. Wow, what a shock that is. That proves definitively uh, that they know nothing about weather. That's what it proves. Zero. Proves nothing. That's all. So there's a big snowstorm. Let's see. 1947. Now do the math. 47, that's 53. 53 plus 16 is 69. Minus 13, plus 2, plus 3, minus 7, plus 8 is a number I have no idea what it is, but uh, bet it on power, Powerball. You're guaranteed to lose. All you people who think that your, your gravy train is coming in tomorrow. So about every half century, we get a big snowstorm. God gets bored. He's working on other universes. Fifty years to him is an air, like a second. Fifty years is nothing. He forgot about Earth for 50 years. He looked down. He said, let's see what's going on down there. They got a drought. They, I throw a snow at them. That's all. They need a nice snow in New York to clean the streets and keep the uh, the, the, the pimps and prostitutes in their houses for a week. Keep the pickpockets and the drug dealers in their houses for a month, for a few days. There's one thing about the snow. The city was safe for a while. People go walk in the street without a fear of being mugged in New York because all of the bad people were hiding in their apartments during the snowstorm. It was the only time they were safe. Play me some music. I feel like a thing in my... I'm going to the doctor today for the dog, so I'm in a weird mood. Today's the cardiology day. Not a big deal. I understand it's only a dog. To you, it's like a turkey or a bird. Most of you don't care about animals. All right, I do. I'm a, I'm a bit odd like that. At night, I worry about animals, things like that. I think about where are they going, how do they live. I think of the swans. I think of the swallows. I think about how they f fly so far and what noble creatures they are. I think about those things like how does God create such a wonderful system such as this? You look at the, the, the animals that fly thousands of miles in a, in a migration, and you look at the things flying over a mountain. This was done by a French cinematographer years ago. And you ask yourself, how in the world do these animals have such fortitude where they barely have the energy to get over the Himalayas on their migration? And you see them struggling. That French photographer, I don't know how he did this. I don't know if you ever saw this thing in National Geographic years ago. And they fly over the mountain. And they use the very last ounce of energy to get over that mountain. And some of them don't make it. They drop right out of the sky. Survival of the fittest, my friend. Survival of the fittest, my friend. Now you say, what are you getting at, Michael? Should a society be based upon survival of the fittest? No. We have to take care of our weak. Those who are born disabled have to have help. We have to help the weak ones and the sick ones. But when we have... 15 million Americans claiming disability, you know that those federal disability benefits are not going to the most needy. You know. You know how many billions of dollars a month are being sucked out by liars who are faking disability. Do you know how many phony immigrants come in here under asylum claims when there is no need for that asylum and they suck the system dry? You're telling me that that's what a sane society does and it doesn't crack down on these leeches and these parasites? So you want me to tell you that I don't know what's going on? I mean, I study nature, and I know societies are different than nature. Human societies are organized 
in many ways, but one of the things the human society does is make sure that those who are very, very sick or disabled are helped by the healthy people. That's a good thing. But what happens when you have leeches and parasites who use that disability to suck the system dry or use their sexuality to pretend that they're victims or use their immigrant status to claim that they're victims of racism, a term invented by the communists in order to shut everybody up. What do you do when you have a thing like that? You get a new president and he cleans house, which is why the Republicans and the Democrats and the media hate Donald Trump. Now, I personally don't think Donald's going to be able to do a lot, not with the crippled government that we have right now and the, and the jackals in the Congress. But we'll have to see. Obama has broken down so many barriers of democracy that maybe Trump can do what uh, Obama's doing and do it simply with, let's say, a pen and a Blackberry. But no one uses a Blackberry anymore. Why? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Now, all these years old, Obama's been running around saying, you know what, I'm going to squeeze every last ounce of change out of this year I have left. So the other day he appoints an openly gay head of uh, the, the Army uh, Def Department of Defense. You say, well, what's wrong with that? The guy gets up and says, this is my husband in front of warriors. See, I thought about that in great detail over the weekend. What is wrong with that? It's a direct slap in the face to the warrior cult in America, which, by the way, has its own mores, its own values, and it doesn't happen to appreciate all of the attributes that Obama seems to think the world should accept. And so what you do is you live and let live if you're a decent president. And just as you would not insult a minority community by imposing upon a minority community values that it doesn't accept, why would you do this to a warrior culture unless you wanted to tell the warrior culture to drop dead and screw you and make as many men as they can drive, run them out of the military because that's what's going to happen. I have received emails from people who come from one generation after another uh, of U.S. military. If I could ever tell you what Obama has done to the morale, I try to tell it to you in Government Zero with zero military, but I only skim the surface of the damage he has done and is doing in his last uh, months of his reign. That's if it's only a few more months. He's trying to make it permanent. All the damage he has done, he's trying to make it permanent so it cannot be undone. He is trying as fast as he can to wreck every attribute of this great nation, and he should be stopped. I don't care whether he has been impeached. They should stop this maniac before he does more damage. He is like the mad bomber running around a subway planting bombs in various subway stations. This man is crazy. But because he's like a crazy person who's never been stopped, they won't do it. They're afraid of one word. Racism. Well, you know what? It's time to stop being afraid of that word. Throw it right back in their face. Because racism is a two-way street, let me tell you that. It runs two ways, not one way. It's not a one-way train. But then I'm only a talk show host, and I'm not running for anything. No, not indeed, I'm not running for anything. I'm just running for the truth. I'm not running from it. This is the Savage Nation. The phone number is 1-800, no, 855-407-282. That's old 855-400-SAVAGE. If you care to join the show, well, we have one open line. Let's take some calls. What do we have now? Oh, we have these callers. They've finally found that I have a show. Let's see. Oh, let's do a God question. I don't want to do Trump. This is good. Anna on WJR. Go ahead, please. Hello, Dr. Savage. I'm going through a difficult time in my life. I wanted to know if you ever doubted that God existed. And y Yes, all the time. Yes, all the time. And you're in very good company. Because even the great saint, Mother Teresa, said in her last months, she was very conflicted because she, she doubted God existed sometimes, in fact, too often, and she never told anybody about it. How do you deal with it? What kind of advice do you have? Because I'm, it's, sometimes it's I'll, so I'll give you some advice. God is so great that he doesn't need you to believe in him all the time. It's that you need to believe in him. You don't, he doesn't need you to believe in him. You need to believe in him. He doesn't need you. You need him. So you're saying, how do you deal with what? The guilt of not believing in God? Or what do you have when you don't believe in God? Is that what you're saying? Well, the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the guilt that not believing in God when I have doubts, and also when I start reading Bible, and that's what really got me going, uh, thinking about all this stuff, because a lot of Christians say, oh, God wants me to do this, or God wants me to do this, and God is going to protect me from this. And when I look at all the horror that's going on in the world, it just, I'm thinking, well, where is God? 
Okay, when you look at Yazidi girls, eight years old, being raped by Muslims who take